I, in 2017, in the years before then, I have picked up a lot of trash. I mean, so much trash that the coming year is not as exciting because the past few years have been horrible. And so I'm trying to get into this whole we're declaring 2018 is the year to be lean. But if I'm honest, I'm, I'm weighted down with junk. And I'm looking at a new year, trying to embrace the new year, but I got too much junk, I got too much trash. And so I'm praying for a new thing while carrying around old things. And I, I, I don't have the strength to keep the false facade up any longer. I mean, if we're all honest, we were in the same position we were this time last year. The, the marriage is still not better. And for some, it's over. Uh, and, and I have been, uh, you know, it's crazy because uh, for some of us, I've declared some things on Facebook. If you weren't down with me in 2017, do this for 2018. But let's just be real. The calendar's changing. I'm not. The, 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 the time is changing, but my same friends that caused me drama in 2017, I'm still holding on to them. So if nothing changes, nothing changes. The calendar can change, but again, if nothing changes, Nothing changes. And so for some, we get New Year's off. But by the second or the third, the same thing that we faced in 2017, we're just going to carry in 2018. We just, we just going to carry it. And then we're mad that this time next year, 2019, we're going to have more resolutions. But along the way, we're just going to be picking up more stuff. And for some, we're limping out of 2017. Oh, man, if I pass the mic around this church, I'm not. But if I did, I mean, if it ain't one thing, it's a, I was going to get my money right by the time this time rolled around last year. My money's still messed up. And I'm blaming everybody. Man, it's the Republicans taking my money. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just picking up, and then, God forbid, if I take a trip down memory lane, whoo, I get mad. Oh, because he did me wrong. That joker did you wrong. He with somebody else right now. And if you let him tell it, you the reason why he with them. Oh, I'm carrying some stuff, man. And, and then it's just like, man, every, every time I turn around, I'm just picking up more stuff. And it's like, I'm going into 2018 like this. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. And so as I was thinking about this, 
I start realizing I don't need to make another resolution, bro. I don't need to declare nothing. I need to let some stuff go. Because the truth of the matter is, what's stopping me from attaining my goals, my God-given goals, has little to do with people. And it's me. And what's easy for me to do is blame it on you. Because I, I don't want to look in the mirror. And so what the truth of the matter is, we have endured some things as a church. Think kingdom mission. We married. And it's bumpy. It's not what we expected. We blame everything. He preached too long. He ain't saying nothing. I mean, it's... It's... It's 2017. And I remember the hopes of 2017 this time. And, and, and here's the news flash. There were people that started off with us, with you. And they ain't here. And so I keep carrying this stuff. And the truth of the matter is, they ain't thinking about you. So why are you spending time thinking about them? Philippians 3. Paul says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But the one thing I do, I might not do much, but the one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on. Man, I, ooh, that'll preach. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There isn't a person in this room that's not hoping for better. There's not a person in this room want to do better in their lives, in any area, in all areas, in some areas. There are some areas in our lives, if we're honest, is keeping, up, keeping us up at night. And we believe that the hope of the new year somehow eradicates those challenges. We just think that because the calendar turns, all of a sudden, Andrew, I don't have that problem anymore. That problem is going to be waking up, looking at you just like this right after midnight. Hello, still here. <laughs> so when in three, two, one, nope, still here. Oh, but, but I declared some things. I heard you and you were loud when you said it but I'm still here. And so if nothing changes, nothing changes. Uh, 2018 is upon us and many of us are going through the ritual of resolutions. So, hey, look, I've been, I'm the first to tell you, I've been getting healthy for 20 years. <laughs> Something got changed, bro. Something got changed because me declaring a thing, that's the beginning. But most of us, if we're not careful, that's where we stopped. I'm going to eat right for 20 minutes in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I just got the mic. If you had the mic, you, you, you would say things that are relevant to us all. So we want better health, we want stronger relationships better financial positions, more impact. I want greater ministry opportunities. Uh, I'm going to return to the gym. I've been paying for a gym membership for 22 months now. And they've seen me for eight minutes. <laughs> Time for me to go back. Yeah, New Year. This is the reason why some of us uh, don't look to forward to a new year because we know that we're lying to ourselves. That we know we're going to start off the gate like Poof! and we're going to hit that gym six o'clock tomorrow. Uh oh, but it's supposed to be 12 degrees. Man. <laughs> I'll start on Wednesday. There's always something and if we're not honest with ourselves, that little something is enough to throw you off for the rest of the year. And so, unless we do something different, nothing changes. 
Nothing is different until we all think differently. Hashtag. Nothing is different until we all think differently. Hashtag. Unless we allow the Lord to heal our hearts, we will never grow past the place of our wounds. Hear me. Unless we allow the Lord to heal us, to heal our hearts, we will never go beyond the level of our wounds. Doesn't matter what we declare. Because it's out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. But there's also my belief determines my behavior. So when we look at what Paul is actually saying, he said, the first thing, check this out, in Philippians, I do not consider that I made it my own. In other words, this is not just my doing. So the first thing we have to do, if we're going, to, if 2018 is sincerely going to be the year, First thing we got to do is examine what we tolerate. That's the first thing. See, the truth of the matter is we tolerate a whole lot more than we're honest. Than, than we're, than, uh, let me back up. We tolerate more than what we say. The truth of the matter is he treated you like crap in the beginning. He ain't changed. You have. But there were inconsistencies that you saw in the beginning. You just overlooked it. There are some challenges we see in our children that we just overlook. And we say things like, they're going to grow out of it. No, baby, they're going to grow into it. And so um, we will never change what we tolerate. There's a story about a, a farmer and, there was a, and he's on his rocking chair and there's a dog sitting beside him and... Um, a guy is jogging, and he hears the, go the dog go, Arr! and it's so painful that the guy who's jogging is like, what in the world is that noise? And he sees the farmer, and he sees the dog. He walks up the long, the long driveway. Arr! He finally gets to the farmer in his rocking chair, and the farmer's smoking a pipe, and he's just rocking. And he says, sir, I've been jogging. I jog around here. What's going on with your dog? He seems to be in pain. And the farmer never, never breaks stride, never breaks stride. He said, oh, yeah, he's sitting on a nail. And the guy's like, what? Move it. He, why is he just sitting there? And the farmer says, because it doesn't hurt bad enough. You will never change what you tolerate. And so for some of us, it doesn't hurt us enough to change. So we don't. So if we're going to actually do, uh, if we're actually going to experience a better life in the sense of spiritual maturity and the things of God, then the question that we have to ask ourselves is what we're tolerating. The fact of the matter is there's some areas of our lives that we are not confronting. And if we don't confront it, it will not change. It goes for church, too. It goes for all of us. You will never change what we don't confront. And so we have to examine what we tolerate. And I am determined one thing. That's, that's what Paul says. The one thing I'm going to do. And so Paul says, I forget what lies behind me. We cannot reach forward looking back. And so oftentimes what we do is we can measure our progress, but we cannot continue to look back. We used to do it this way and we don't do it anyway. The, the job used to do and we used to, hey, hey, you got to have almost a college degree to work at McDonald's. Have you seen them cash registers? <laughs> Until we let it go, whatever's in our life will continue to hold us back until we let it go. The first thing we have to do is examine what we tolerate. The second thing is, uh, Paul says, I, this is, this is crazy, this is what Paul says, I strain forward, which means we have to expect obstacles. See, 
if we go into any new thing with the same mindset that we struggled with before, nothing changes. So in order for us to be able to embrace what the new thing is, we have to change. I was talking to Gary, and, and Gary said he has this friend of his that has a dog, is a dog trainer. And I was like, hey, my dog got issues. Do you think he can help me with my dog? And then Gary said a snide remark, which I, he said, well, it's usually the owner's problem. I didn't catch it until now. <laughs> hey, man. It's not cool. My dog is seven years old, and I said, can he teach an old dog new tricks? Then he said something about the owner again. <laughs> huh. So for 2018, the year to come, the weeks to come, the days to come, for some of us, we've been out of work uh, for the last couple of weeks, and you're not looking forward to the second. Your heart is racing. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to go back to work. But here's the thing that's funny to me. You've been working in the same place for 15 years. Like, what? I mean, 15 years. So you tolerate it. So we should expect obstacles. Paul wrote this letter to Philippi, the Christians in Philippi, when he was about 60 years old in prison. So he's older. And he's in prison. So that speaks to us about circumstances. We all got them. Yes, you can't go to school because you can't afford it and you're older and this is what's going on. Yes, expect obstacles. No one said it's going to be easy. No one said that they're just going to roll the red carpet out for us and it's just going to be so different. No, nope. we should expect obstacles. We should expect obstacles tomorrow. We should expect obstacles an hour from now. We should expect obstacles because a man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. There's always trouble. There's always obstacles. So there's three obstacles that I'm not going to go in detail with now. But basically, there's always at least three obstacles. The flesh friends, and past failures. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Flesh, you did it because you felt like it. Okay, there's consequences because you felt like it. And so man up, woman up, and deal with the consequences of the decisions that we made. And so if we keep making the same decisions, we get the same results. The Bible is still true. You read what you sow. So the first thing, examine what you tolerate. The second thing, expect obstacles. The third thing, Paul says, I press to urge or strain in motion, to urge forward with force. So we all must, the third thing, endure the challenge. So if we're going to possess whatever your goal is. Your goal could be as simple as, I want to be able to save money in 2017. That could be your goal. We we'll start somewhere. Your goal could be, hey, I want to lose 100 pounds. Start somewhere. Put down the big mic, the big mic, bro. Put it down. Like start somewhere. It's very rarely that a person says, you know what, here's my goal that I'll never meet. Usually what happens is that we don't endure the challenges. See, sometimes it's not what you carry or pick up, but it's what you keep. And so sometimes in life, what we have a tendency to do is to pick up stuff that was never called for us to pick up. If I just handle the issues that I created last year, I'll be better off this year. If I, just, if I just do the one thing, not a list of stuff, if I just do the one thing, it'll change my life. But I, becoming, I become overwhelmed by many things. Oh, I got to get my money right, I got to get my health right, I got to get my marriage right. Hey, how about you do this? How about, you, how about we get a strong relationship with God we become true disciples and everything else will fall in place. How about that? 
Because what Paul is saying is, I can't do it in my own. I can't do it on my own. I need the Spirit of God to help me treat my wife, treat my kids, do what God has called me to do. I need God's help. And so we start the thing in the flesh, and my flesh gets tired, and my flesh is moody, and my flesh is up and down. We have to stand firm in our faith and be spirit-led. So first thing is, examine what we tolerate. Second thing, expect obstacles. The third thing is to endure the challenges. And here's the thing about garbage. You can move the garbage out the room, but it stays there so long, it still smells like garbage. If you keep it long enough, even when you decide to give it up, you still smell like it. So what we have to do is literally be washed in his word, washed in his spirit, because the residue of my mistakes are still on me. The residue of because he did me wrong or she did me wrong, I have hate towards them. And I'm praying to God to help me deal with them, and I will not admit that I secretly hate them. I hate how they made me feel. I hate how that, that, that spouse belittled me and now he appears to be happy and I'm over here suffering. And I have to give my garbage to God. It's interesting how we collect garbage now. It collects in the house, we take it outside, we roll it to the curb, and then they take it to a bigger place for garbage. And then we have smaller garbage cans sprinkled throughout the room. And if you're not careful, one little thing in your garbage can just just funk up your whole house. Same thing in the spirit. One little instance of hate can affect every area of my life. One instance of holding grudges or mistakes can continue to hinder me through my goals and my life. And I wonder why I get to a certain point and everything collapses. And I can't pray away what I have to give away. Look, everybody that lives in a city has a garbage container. Here's what's crazy. Unless you have kids, you have to take your garbage out. I mean, the city's like, listen, you gotta at least get it to the curb. They don't knock on your door. Hey, you got any garbage? Oh, take your time, we'll be here until, no. And then here's the thing, you have to do what the city says. I ain't got enough garbage on Monday. I need for you to come on Tuesday. See, here's what our problem is. We want to give God our garbage based on our terms. It doesn't work like that. And so what we have to do is first recognize the fact that garbage. We got stuff that we've been carrying. And we keep picking up more stuff. And we're being weighed down with stuff. And so now we come to church with these garbage and we can't even lift our hands. I don't like that song. Oh, it's because you got too much garbage. Because the truth of the matter is any song that exalts his name should move me. I care about the melody. I don't care if they don't sound like me when I sing. <laughs> garbage. It's garbage. And so in order for us to be able to endure the challenge, we need to do the fourth thing. The apostle Paul says, he said, hey, I press on toward a goal for the prize of the upward call, a call higher than myself. We have to elevate Christ in our life. Oh, we got to elevate him. We have to elevate him above our garbage. The call of God should be greater than the challenges that we face. And, and generally what happens is that dissatisfaction is from where we are. So I have to elevate my life in Christ. I'm going to tell you how to do that in a minute. But I have to elevate my life in Christ because I will never put down these bags if I believe I'm designed to carry all of them. That's just my lot in life. I mean, that's just how it is. It's like, I can't expect to go any further. Because, I mean, I got so much guilt about how I used to treat my kids that I still treat them the way that I despise. Because I still, I want to love my wife, 
but heck, I don't even know how to love myself. So how, if I don't know how to love myself, which is evidence my love with God, how can I love someone else? And so what we end up doing is elevating our problems above Christ and not elevating Christ above our problems. And so what he's calling us to do is to elevate himself above all. And so that means I have to, yes, there are seasons in my life, sweetheart, I wish I could tell you, just because you decide to, to, to get a trash bag and put all your problems in here and burn it up. There's some seasons in my life that I have to carry my mistakes. You know why? Because those mistakes affected other people and other people have not forgiven me and they constantly remind me of my mistakes. But I got to know who I am in God because Paul said, I forget those things that are behind me. Doesn't mean that the people didn't see Paul as a killer and a murderer, but I forget those things because I'm pressing towards Christ. So, yes, I am the person that used to persecute Jews. I am the person that used to murder Jews for the Lord's sake. But I forget those things. And so I'm not what you call me. I'm who God called me. So my daddy ain't to blame for who I answer to. My situations and challenges are not to blame because I know who I am. And so if there's a time that I have to carry my mistakes and I have to carry the guilt of those mistakes, I will carry them. But please hear me. I know who I am. And so he will make the birth. Man, when Gary talked about being the donkey, it sparked something in me because I realized I've been carrying burdens that he told me to drop. I have to be led by the spirit. You have to be led by the spirit by elevating Christ. So I want to be angry, but I know that he's forgiving me. So I can't be angry. It's his love that draws. So I can't hate the person that killed me, that, that's, that's killing me or stabbing me because what I realized, he died for him too. And so I have to elevate Christ from what I see. The drug dealer can stop being a drug dealer if he understands who he is. But the challenge for the church is to recognize the garbage that we carry. Is this a real problem? Or is it because I smell like my garbage? So we have to elevate Christ in our life. And, and I'm, I'm seeing things and it, it, in my heart, I feel the goodness shot off now. And so there was a timidity that I had wanting not to lose anyone. But he reminded me, dude, you carrying stuff I told you to drop. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to forget to go forward. I'm going to forgive to go forward. I'm going to go forward, and if I go forward by myself, praise the Lord. Because I know what he called me to. That's how we elevate. See, I don't know what your struggle is or the garbage that you're carrying. But you were never designed to live in filth. You were never designed to live in garbage. You were never designed to be lowly in the sense that you have low self, we have low self-esteem and we don't feel that we're lovable. So any love will do. No, you got to elevate yourself in Christ. See, how do we do that? We got to get back. I, I, hey, it's the same message, just a different. We got to get back in the word, dude. See, here's the, here's the thing that I'm realizing. When I'm in the word, I hear what he calls me. The world calls me something totally different. And if I don't know who I am, I will answer to anything. Answering to anything gives me garbage for my identity. And so now, Bobby, I do my own self-fulfilling prophecy. But, okay, why do we call a person a liar? Because they lie. A thief, because they steal. So when they do what we call them, why are we shocked? I can't believe you stole my wallet. You say he was a thief, right? But it's my wallet. Doesn't matter. Hebrews 5 and 14. See, here's what I'm realizing. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those by reason of us have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. For most of us, you're not a baby anymore. You know what's right or wrong. 
<laughs> like real talk. Now, we can debate whether you justified it, whether we justified it in our own hearts and minds. But you know what's right or wrong. In other words, what Paul said in Hebrews, he said, look, grow up. So if you're not going to elevate yourself in Christ by the reading of his word, by worship, the corporate gatherings, by community and, and being accountable, if you're not going to do those things, then next year, this time, you're just going to pick up more stuff for 2018. And you're going to go to 2019 with that big thing that they have in the hotel rooms with that little cart. <laughs> so elevate Christ in our life by reading, worshiping, community, congregational worship. And here's a scary word, accountability. They say that the reason why most people fail in their fitness it's because they're not accountable to anyone. So there's a place for personal trainers. See, I give myself a break because I worked hard last night. You know what your personal trainer says? Give me 50. No, 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 50 push-ups. What happens is when the community groups and those things are supposed to disciple us so that we become disciple makers. All, those, all this in terms of worship, greeting people, children's ministry, no heat, all that stuff is making us disciples. <laughs> Elevator. And somebody just said, I'm a good disciple then because I should have been going 20 minutes ago. Um, so we elevate Christ in our life. And then the last thing is execute, execute. Execute. Stop talking. Man, I talk so much sometimes you can't say amen. Sometimes I talk, sometimes I talk so much I tell myself to shut up. You talk too much. Let's talk more action. How many times have you said, well, this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to start doing it. You never start. Here's the one that's, I got this thing about social media. But here's the thing that gets me. I'm letting you know, this is a Facebook post, in 2018, if you weren't there, then don't expect to be there in 2018 because 2018 is my year. I'm going to lose the weight I've been losing for the last 20 years. I'm going to get my money right. And it's just like, why are you making announcements, man? Why you keep making all these announcements? Real bosses move in silence. Okay? I still sound like the old guy? It was okay? I do sound like the old guy. Okay, real movers uh, move in silence. In other words, man, make the announcement after you accomplished it. Because here's, here's what guilt is. I still ain't lose the weight. Okay, so do it afterwards. Because <laughs> I remember you saying you was going <laughs> to... Execute, execute, execute. So here's what I would say in close. 2018, and here's, I'm speaking prophetically. Pray something prophetic. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah, I'm ushering in the mood. Here's the prophetic statement for 2018. And I stayed up all night and I heard the Lord say, my son Antoine, that's right, yeah. And, and Dion was in the room, like, yeah. 2018, my son, it will be what you make it. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, <laughs> listen, <laughs> that's it. 2018 gonna be what you make it. You're gonna get lemons. Yo, oh, yes. The water heat is gonna break. The refrigerator is gonna go out. The car is gonna get a flat tire. It's not the devil. It's because the equipment is not permanent. It's old. I started off this year and all this stuff broke. But the truth of the matter is, you had warning lights for 16 years. Uh, mercy has run out. 
And so don't get caught up in the hype. It's going to be what you make it. Whatever you put in, that's what you get out. The Bible says you reap what you sow. Don't expect all A's if you never turn in the paper. I can't believe I got an F. What happened? Man, I forgot to turn the paper in. That ain't the devil, bro. That's your stupidity. Harsh. But my point is, 2018, through the help of the Spirit, this church will be what we put into it. It's a principle. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and laid his life down for it. You will get out of your marriage what you put into it. So whether it's starting a new gym membership, and see, this is the part, this is, I, I, I got to talk to the Corys of the world. See, the guys who go to the gym regularly, see, when I come in there and I don't know them, they look at me strange. But you know what? Screw you. I'm here now. Because I'll tell you what happens. Remember, the moment you make changes, people will judge that. Ah, oh, he's gonna quit smoking. He said that. Oh, he always says that. So don't say it anymore, just do it. Don't expect people to celebrate the changes you made because that's not why we're doing it. Don't, accept, don't expect people to celebrate you for every great accomplishment that you made in 2018. When the thing that I realize that every success you make, haters are identified. I don't speak to haters. I don't, I don't speak that language. But some people don't want you to do well. So don't be shocked when they don't celebrate you. Every eye closed. Father, I pray for those who will admit I'm taking some garbage in 2018. But Lord, I pray that the garbage that is taken, the garbage that we recognize, that by the Spirit we give it to you. So I'm going to ask those who, who need to repent, who need um, prayer um, if you want to you can come to the altar ask the Lord in the next few months three weeks we're going to talk about reset but the reality of it is we all need a reset we all need a mulligan we all need a do over it's time for us to drop this garbage See, here's the reason why we can drop the garbage. Because Jesus suffered. He was wounded. He was abused. He was battered. He was rejected. Man, he was lied on and talked about. He was insulted. Verbally abused. People try to spring their identity or their expectations on him. So he knows all the challenges and all the things we've been burdened down with. But he's come to lighten the load. First thing I, I'm learning is to admit my mistakes. To do what's in my power by the Spirit. But for some of us, we need to start off by saying sorry. And so, Father, those that are at this altar, I pray that they have the strength, the courage, the fortitude to give you their garbage. Because we all have it. You said in Proverbs 23 and 18, that our future is not lost and we have hope and that hope is in Christ Jesus 
And so, Lord, we pray that we elevate you in every area of our lives and that we see you higher lifted up and that we know the garbage that has attached itself to us we can give up 